Good morning, friends. This is Jim Hoffman, pastor at St. John's United Methodist Church. It's a little after 11, about 11.19 or 11.20 or so. I'm uh, posting our daily devotion a little early today. Uh, we're going to take a trip down to my dad's house here in a bit to uh, go see him since Chloe and Brooke and Matt are in town. A good chance to see his granddaughter and his great-granddaughter, so... Uh, we're going to go do that, and so I decided I would just post this a little bit early, but I want to invite you to come and join me. Those of you that get notifications, you'll join, and I uh, look forward to seeing you here. Um, for those of you that watch this later on, don't forget to leave a quick comment, say hello. I would appreciate you doing that. Always nice to hear from all of you. Once we finish, you are more than welcome to share this on your own Facebook page, Maybe one of your family and your friends will take a moment to join us for our devotion time today. We're going to be reading, by the way, out of the book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles, uh, the 16th chapter, and we're going to read verses 25 to 34. Acts chapter 16, verses 25 to 34. This is part of the reading about Paul and Silas being in prison. Two times where the apostles are in prison. Peter is in prison earlier with, I believe, Barnabas, if I remember correctly, in chapter, oh, let's see. Yeah, chapter 5. Again, Acts chapter 16, verses 25 to 34. It's the Wednesday before Turkey Day. I imagine folks are really busy today. I would anticipate you've got lots going on. Here's our opening prayer, friends. We'll just go ahead and get started. Oh God, by your spoken word, you created everything that is. By your incarnate word, you redeemed us. By your comforting word, you are with us still. Prepare us now to hear your word to us this day. Amen. All right, Acts chapter 16, the 25th verse to verse 34 reads, And about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was an earthquake so violent that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, since he supposed that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted in a loud voice, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. The jailer called for lights, and rushing in, he fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them outside and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They answered, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. They spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. And at that same hour of the night, he took them and washed their wounds. Then he and his entire family were baptized without delay. He brought them into the house and set food before them, and he and his entire household rejoiced that he had become a believer in God. When morning came, the magistrate sent the police, saying, Let those men go. Huh. Yeah, the fascinating story. Our devotion writer today is Robert Alonso Rodriguez. Robert is from Mexico, Nuevo Leon. And it focus first is the first verse about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. He says, I have usually made a point to arrive early to worship so that I have time to listen for God's message for me. 
But then my church began playing praise music ahead of the service, music I'm not familiar with and really do not enjoy. So I started arriving just prior to the sermon, thinking this is the only thing I need from God. One Sunday, the sermon was based on Acts 16, 16 to 40. The story of Paul and Silas in prison spoke directly to my heart. Rather than dwell on their pain and suffering into the night, they began to pray and sing praises to God. That message had a powerful impact on me. Praise is a sign of love we can always offer to God who is faithful, generous, and compassionate. More than that, praise is the affirmation of God's love for us. Moving forward, I began to join in every praise song, whether I was familiar with it or not. Later, I would search the internet for the less familiar songs so I could learn them. Now I don't want to be late for worship because I don't want to miss the songs of praise. Being present and fully prepared to participate is something I have come to value and enjoy. Thought for the day is, is I will offer the praise that God deserves. Now, his is particular, his devotion is in particular about worship style, and we could certainly get into a conversation about that. Uh, those of us that are very traditional and like hymns, like organ, like piano, uh, like choir, those kinds of things, uh, that may be our preference. And we like our preferences, and so we really um, make it well known. <laughs> I'm going to put it that way. We make it well known that that is our preference. Um, and nothing else is really going to do. Um, and then there are others who um, have, have maybe um, appreciate and, and really uh, find their, um, their place in a more modern worship setting. And so they enjoy praise bands and they don't mind drums. They don't mind guitars. They don't mind lights and things like that. They actually uh, find themselves also able to worship God in that setting as well. And, you know, for them, traditional worship is maybe not their cup of tea. And we could certainly battle about what is right and what is wrong. And I would actually just offer this to you. I don't think either are right or either are wrong. They're human preferences. They are modes and methodologies that we have created. And so we go to church sometimes based upon our preference. Now you think about Paul and Silas and why they are in prison. They're in pre prison for preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And they have been in prison for some time. Now, the prison isn't uh, like our modern prisons. It was a cave. Um, it had iron doors on it. It barely had any windows. It was typically dark and dank, and it was just horrible conditions. They didn't have beds and mattresses and, and TV and all of those kinds of things. And so it was, it was a pretty dank kind of existence. And yet God almost, you know, God, God was able to deliver them. So let's say the earthquake was an act of God. And an earthquake comes and the prison doors fly open and their chains fall apart. What a great miracle it is. And everybody in the prison could have escaped. And when the jailer comes to find anybody who's got, you know, to come to, to take his own life, basically, because he knows that if he lets people out of his charge escape, he's going to be executed. Uh, Paul calls out and says, no, we're all still here. We're all still here. We've been singing praises to God, even in the worst parts of our, our lives. While we're being persecuted for his name, we will still sing praises for him. And, this, and the jailer is amazed that they did not escape. And he says, what must I do to be saved? And that can be looked at on, on two different levels. One is the physical level. What must I do to be saved means, what can I do to make sure that I'm not going to get in trouble for this? Because your chains are loosed and the gates are open. And it's my job to make sure that you stay bound and you stay secure. Now, you could have been asking that question, or certainly the spiritual question, what must I do to be saved? And it could be a combination of both, right? And Paul says, believe. Believe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved. And the guy does, and he and his family are baptized, and they praise God, and he serves them a meal because of this. I think it's amazing that when we take moments to praise God, 
even in worship and you think about outside of worship. The praise that is ever on our lips can be something that can offer life to someone else. Because I'm pretty sure the jailer probably heard them singing. He probably heard them singing along all the songs, whatever it was that they were singing. I'm sure he heard them and somehow that made a difference, made a profound impact in his life. And I think there are ways in which we can sing. It does not have to be in the traditional form that we think it is. You know, it doesn't have to be song with rhythm and chords and notes and all that kind of stuff. Our lives can sing praises to God. Our words and our deeds can be a hymn of praise to God. We can thank God from whom all blessings flow. We can thank God for the goodness that's in our lives. We can thank God for the blessings that we have. We can thank God for the abundance that not only we inhabit, we have the ability to share as well. We can thank God that we live in uh, this part of the world where, for the most part, we are safe and secure. and We don't have to worry about much. We can thank God for so many things, and that praise can be ever on our lips. And maybe at this Thanksgiving season, that's what we need to do, is to praise God and thank God from whom everything flows. Let's take a moment to pause and pray. Gracious God, attune our hearts to worship you in spirit and in truth. May we all find joy in praising you, and may those praises be ever on our lips. Amen, amen, and amen. Friends, thank you so much for being here on this Wednesday. I hope that you guys um, uh, take a moment as you do to not only enjoy this worship uh, with one another, this time of devotion with one another, but uh, take a moment to pass it on as well. Uh, tomorrow for Thanksgiving, just so that you know, um, normally we would do a devotion on Thursdays. I've told Allie that she can spend uh, time with her family and her friends and celebrate and not have to worry about a devotion. So we won't have a devotion tomorrow. I'll be back on Friday, though, just so you know. So come and join me for our devotions then. I hope that you have a blessed time with your family and your friends as you enjoy the Thanksgiving holiday. I encourage you to take a moment as you do to pause and pray for your community of faith, for those folks that are part of this community uh, on our daily devotion that you might pray for one another. Pray for me, because I'm praying for you. And I hope that you enjoy the rest of your Wednesday. God's peace and grace be upon you. Thanks for being here. Great to see all of you today. Hi, Barbara. Hello to you and Chris. I'm actually finishing. <laughs> so I'll post this here in a minute, and you can watch it then. But thanks, friends, for being here, and God's peace be with you.